So today we have the story teaser for the Golden Midsummer event. I have seen the trailers in the game. I have played through the event in the game as well. But I want to go ahead and talk about it afterwards and see what you guys thought about it as well. And I also wanted to go ahead and watch the video in one full swoop. Because you you know, you see it in the game, but you don't see it in one full video. So I want to see how it flows together and then we can talk about, you know, our opinions on it after the video. I often travel during storms, which means my eyes are often blinded by the rain. Many times I couldn't even see what was right in front of me. I like this one. One day I finally reached the top of the mountain. I looked out with the clouds beneath my feet and only the gentle breeze murmuring in my ears. The highest mountain is a clear and enlightened heart. Here there is no self, no hatred, no regrets, and no desires. Like it was his heart, his self, Let's like his own heart. On a journey, for I am the breeze. We will meet again, no matter how far along the road. Life has just begun, and maybe the whole world can be my home. Oh, see? See how it just smooth transition? This had me the hair down. Oh, man. And this was so adorable. <laughs> so, like, ugh, I don't know. To you who lived here in the past, I hope you liked this song. Very quick, though. One stormy oh. night, a girl found a way to the future in the library. <sighs> she said to herself, I shall create my dream kingdom. I'll carve mountains and oceans and erect castles and towns. Then she Good spoke too. to those who shared her dream. Please be proud of all that is unreal, for we are greater than this world. For our magnificent kingdom is a small and forbidden paradise. The shells went hard, man. There See how it all comes together? Bird made of crystal. It was beautiful and fragile and could sing the most beautiful songs. But since mortals couldn't see it, they believed it to be a trick. How could a transparent bird possibly exist, let alone sing? When the bird heard that, it flapped its wings and flew across mountains and seas all the way to the night sky, where it turned into a star. Her destiny. Its brilliance was so dazzling that it illuminated everyone. It allowed all those that could see it to follow its light through the dark night. To sail through the seas under the guidance of the stars. It was born in wisdom, but trapped in ignorance. It has never voiced a complaint, for this is its destiny. Guiding people to see their destinies is the very meaning of its existence. So the bird's destiny was to help other people figure out their destiny. So with that being said, you guys can let me know in the comments what was your favorite out of the four different mirages that we had. If you guys played the quest already and played through all of them. For me, I'd say, I mean, the whole, the whole event was awesome, honestly. And I really didn't expect this too, because this is the, like, literally the tail end of, I guess, year three of Genshin. Or whatever you would call, like, 2.0 to 2.8. It's, it's the end. You know, like literally the next thing that we get is Sumeru, an entirely new region. So this is a lot, you know, I mean, I'm, not, I'm nowhere near done with like exploring and doing all the puzzles and whatnot. So it was so good. Like, but personally speaking, if I had to pick my favorite Mirage out of the four for the all four characters, I got to hand it to Fashil. I think Fashil just takes the cake on this one. It is a hard decision because all four of them were really freaking good. Every single character's mirage had to do with their past and how, you know, how they grew up or like their, you know, when they were a kid and how they kind of had their, their arc, their character arc when they grew up. Right. And everybody kind of got, you know, a little bit exposed, you know, as a kid and whatnot. But with Fashil, you know, I feel like they really kind of dug deep into her thought process and, you know, exactly what she wanted and how she went about it. You know, her ups, her downs, her embarrassments and everything. When we get to the ending of Fashil's, if you didn't see it you see a whole nother fishil 
And there's the whole like Oz leaving your side and going over to that for shill. And then of course the brand new outfit as well. So I feel like for shill was like really the, not so much the main event, but I feel like they kind of gave for shill the most out of everybody else. And don't even get me started on the music. The OST for for shill was insane. The, the fact that they gave her like a whole soundtrack essentially was nuts. You know, I mean like Kazuo, I think it was just, I don't even know if they had like new music for anybody else, honestly. I think, no, they did, they did, they did, they did. Zinian had some good little tunes too. I like how you, you're you on the uh, music notes and it actually plays the battle theme. But I think for Shill just had like a whole brand spanking new, like just vibe, you know? Like you felt like you were at that castle that, you know, the, the Imanakreis, you know what I mean? Like you felt like you were there. Uh, it had a, like a, a normal tune. It was a battle tune. Like it was, yeah. There was just too many things that they gave for Shill for me to not give her the number one spot. Like the new outfit, the music, and then the aesthetics, like awesome. Second though, I'd say was Mona. Mona had a really good one too. Just aesthetically, it was so pleasing. I mean like the whole, like all the stars and you know, the, the puzzles were actually pretty good too. They were really creative. I did a pretty good job with them, honestly, but when I got to some of them, it was like, yeah, you know, it took me a bit to figure out, but it's when, when you get to like the extra puzzles afterwards, once you've already completed it the first time, that's when it gets a little like, oh my God, you know? But I'd say Mona's was really good and like learning more about astrology and what, what Mona has to actually go through and like, you know, all the inquiries she gets asked and learning about people's fate. And you realize how important Mona is as a character when it comes to the world of Tavat, you know, because like she can tell the people's like people's fate and look through her scry glass and see this and see that. And yeah, like, honestly, I, had, I would have to say it's a close second for Mona. Third, I would say was Kazuo's. Kazuo doesn't really have that much to like see in terms of aesthetics. I think Zinian's was more pleasing to the eye. Well, it was like a very really very really dark and eerie i'm not sure why it was so dark and bleak in zinian's world but you know or her mirage rather it was very just like sad looking it's all like like halloween-ish or something i mean shinian's birthday is in october so maybe it has to do with that i'm not sure but i do not know why it was so dark and eerie for her her mirage there the highlights for her i'd say was yunjin and jingling popping up uh for her birthday that was like such a big surprise there to see other characters in that uh, they kind of left all of us out of it though, but I guess that makes sense because it was kind of like a dream, you know, so to speak. As far as story goes, Cosmos was really good. It was really, really good. Um, aesthetically, it was kind of just like, okay, I guess. But, you know, you had the whole like demonstration of Tomo, his, his friend, who died trying to uh, fight Raiden. Very quickly, you guys noticed that the Electro Sealy that's following you in that Kazuo quest is actually representing Tomo. So when that Electro Sealy stops, and Kazuo keeps on moving forward, you the player. Unfortunately, that's symbolizing that Tomo didn't make it. And we know that, we know that already, you know, we already know. So, you know, he didn't make it. And um, th there were some things that we already knew about Kazuo in the past. In his quest, uh, not his story quest, but his mirage, you see his father, well, you don't see his father, but you hear about his father and his grandfather as well. Um, and if you read the notes, you can tell like what happened back then and how the Katahara clan just kind of fell apart, you know? And by the time Kazuo was like growing up and everything, it's kind of not in a good light, you know, it was pretty much done at that point. So their downfall was complete and his father told Kazuo to, uh, or Kazuo's father told him just kind of drop everything and go out there and just kind of like wander, you know, just like explore the world, drop everything, don't worry about a thing and just, you know, keep the Katahara clan alive, keep going. But it begs, it begs the question, like, for me, is Kazuo going to, like, get married, have kids, and, like, you know, keep the Katahara family going? Like, what's going to happen there, you know? But maybe he still just be the last one, and that's it. Shout out to Ask Me For Directions Arnold. <laughs> that was hilarious. The Fantastic Bo. Uh, I forget the squirrel's name as well. But a lot, a lot of talking, like, uh, statues of ravens and the, the talking flower. I forget what her name was, darn it. It was in Zinian's uh, Mirage. Like, the, the blazing something. The talking flower, um, just like so many different like weird things. It's quite, this this whole event was like so weird, you know, like it was weird in the best way possible. There are still world quests to do. There's still more things to do in the Golden Apple Arpelago. Um, No Klee this time. No Alice, I don't really think. I mean, we talk about her in the quest, but uh, so we get some Venti action as well. Venti's also part of it. Drunk Kazuo in the beginning. Um, a lot of like funny moments, key moments in there as well. 
Uh, for me personally, I had Venti standing in certain areas that he probably wasn't supposed to be in. Um, but Venti's on the roof, and that lines up with the actual dialogue that he says. So that's really funny. Um, the weird thing, though, is Venti stays on the roof. Anybody notice that? Like, I, I don't know. Venti stays on the roof the entire time. I think he's still there, too. Um, but for me, he was actually on the island as well. So that was like really weird. But and towards the end of the quest, you do hear a little voice, a little voice you probably heard before in the 2.8 live stream. If you actually managed to watch it without it loading and buffering. Um, but yeah, you hear that voice again. And, you know, she mentions that she's not hostile. She's just watching and she's, you know, low key kind of jealous of what you guys got going on, you know, like Mona and your, the whole crew and everything. Right. Um, but she mentions that she can't leave, which I found to be interesting. I don't know why she can't leave, but unless it was like metaphorical, I'm not sure why, but hopefully we'll see her soon in Sumeru. But that was cool. A little Dendro symbol popped up at the end there. The, the Dendro, I guess, flower. I don't know. But the, the, the icon for the symbol. But overall, I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was really, really good. Like I said, it's not completely done yet. I finished all of the like main quests, but I haven't finished like all the world quests and stuff like that and exploring. But yeah, I'd say I love it. Um, I did miss the very first one, the 1 1.6 summer version of this, but honestly, I did watch a bit of it and I'd say this one, it definitely outweighs the first, I feel like in my opinion, maybe not that with the, all the events and whatnot, but as far as the story goes and the main quests go, this was awesome. You know, um, I know, I know you had like a boss fight in the first one as well with Mangu Kenki, but I don't know, man, I think everybody having their own respective little dream mirages here. It was really cool. And I like how. It happened because of the machine that the Fatui guy made, uh, Bresikov? Yeah, Bresikov made. And it's because the, you know, we are stronger as individuals, like our characters, like Zinyan and Mona and everybody, but the Fatui are weak, you know, in the head. So they go into madness while we have these mirages. We're able to actually have a stable mindset, even when we're in front of this machine. Like I said, really enjoyed it. It was really, really good. Um, very happy with it. I uh, love Venti as well in it. And yeah, hopefully looking forward to more. You do have about 30 more days to finish it up. So there's still a lot of time to get all those chests, all those events, all those puzzles, the conch shells, for Shill's outfit and for Shill herself as well. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments. Was it meh? Was it okay? Was it really, really good? Did you enjoy it as well? What was your favorite Mirage out of the four characters? Um, like I said, mine was definitely Fashil. I'd say Fashil first, Mona second. And then I guess I'd say... Ah, because, you know, Yunjin and Zhengling popping up. You know, I'm going to say Fashil, Mona, Zinian, Kazuo. You know, Kazuo was great and all, but like I said, I think we already knew most things about Kazuo in the past, besides some, some details, but I think I'd put Kazuo to the bottom. I mean, they were all great, don't get me wrong, but in terms of, like, what I enjoyed the most... Cosmos went by very, very quickly, and it was just kind of like, you know, the, the best part about it was Tomo at the end, that, that last chapter. But yeah, everybody else was just like, it was cool, man. But that'll do it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and enjoyed the Golden Apple Hour Pelico event this time around. If you're still playing it, let me know. But without further ado, I will catch you guys very soon in the next one.